Greetings, everyone. We will go ahead and get started. <laughs> Welcome to WaterWise Wednesday, presented by the Eagle River Watershed Council and underwritten by Eagle County and Eagle River Water and Sanitation District. We're really happy to have you here tonight. Uh, as you probably know, the Eagle River Watershed Council uh, is advocates for the health and well-being of the Eagle River and the Upper Colorado River. The WaterWise Wednesdays are a part of our education mission. This evening was uh, the brainchild of our, one of our new board members, Steve Saro, and we are really happy to have him organizing the evening and presenting a program on golf courses in the valley and some of their green practices. Melissa McDonald is our executive director and she is going to introduce the speakers this evening and we're glad to have you here. Thanks. I'm going to introduce the first speaker and they will all introduce themselves. We have four uh, golf course guys here tonight. You can tell by the, uh, the tan faces from, I believe it was from the wind, not from the sun today. Um, and our first speaker will be Kevin Ross. He is the director of golf at the Country Club of the Rockies, otherwise known as Arrowhead. And um, these guys are all interesting. If you look at what they have their degrees in, he has his um, degree um, from the University of Maine, an associate degree in science, in plant and soil science, and a turf grass management degree from Penn State University. These guys know more than any of us about grass, what's under it, and what affects it. Um, Kevin started working for his dad when he was 12 years old, mowing greens. His dad was a golf course professional. Um, and you said that was uh, about 40 years ago um, that he started. <laughs> I just want to give him this era aura of authority and experience. And um, he's also the past president of the Maine Golf Course Superintendents Association. He has a consulting firm called Ross Golf Agronomy, which I'm going to go look up shortly after this introduction. Um, and he coaches basketball, cycling, and Nordic skiing in his spare time. So without further ado, I'd like to present Kevin Ross. Thank you very much. Uh, pleasure to be here tonight. And um, I'd like to thank the uh, Watershed Council for inviting the four of us here tonight to uh, kind of share some of the stuff that uh, we do uh, on golf courses that uh, I'm guessing most people in the room are probably not aware of. Um, I always get the, uh, every time I take somebody down to my maintenance facility or tour them on the golf course, I always get the blank face when we're done of the wow i just didn't know this bunch was involved um, and there is a lot involved we're here for one hour we're going to kind of buzz through some things try not to get too technical um, but uh, give you a little background on on what we do and who we are um, as she mentioned i've been at arrowhead uh, now for this is my 16th year i'm a new englander at heart so i started in new england and uh, one thing that's uh, been an education for me and continues to be an education is actually the snowpack, river, flow of the river, water use, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I think um, I'll probably never stop learning until I, if and when I do possibly leave the valley. Um, we did want to do one little audience poll um, to kind of see what the general consensus of the audience was. Steve is my uh, tabulator here, so. Um, Maybe uh, you, pr you might be a combination of everything, but maybe your, your interest the most. Uh, how avid fishermen? Tennis, yes. Okay. Golfers. Uh, you want to vote one? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. One vote. One vote. No hanging chads. <clears throat> Landscape. Homeowners. Two. There's some of us, you know, I'm in three of those categories. Uh, I voted for the first one, of course, but anyway. No, uh, I guess your primary. I guess we want to be. That could be others, Steve, multitaskers. Yeah. Well, I can't multitask. <laughs> River recreation. 
Okay, that's a pretty good idea. So others, let's just say anyone more than one table. Very nice. Thanks, Steve. <clears throat> Um, in my time here, and uh, still consistently, um, I look at the river pretty much every day, and many times, uh, five, six, ten, fifteen times a day, uh, whether it's on the golf course, whether I'm uh, road biking along Highway 6, uh, various different times, and um, I don't think the importance of the river to this valley and to Eagle County can really be... Uh, I mean, it's tough to tell. Without the river, there is no valley, um, no matter what it is. Um, so the importance certainly, importance is there, and we need to take care of it. Whether it's rafting, whether it's golf course design, playability in, into a golf hole, um, whether it's watering that golf course, or, you know, there's not very many of you that can look at the river like I do right there. Because I, I cross a couple nice bridges every day a couple three times stop check out the fish check out what's going on i can kind of i'm not a, not a water expert but i can tell a lot of things uh pretty quickly by uh looking into the river there so that's always kind of a nice uh nice prize when i can scope out a few of those but uh sorry i cannot tell you where that is for you guys at fish <laughs> um but but they let's we got to be realistic about some things too and uh, there's the most important thing probably uh that that river can do for everybody in this valley is uh, without something co coming out of our tap, um, there is no valley. So I think it's important for us as golf course managers um, and everybody to understand the importance of it and manage it the best that they can. Um, sometimes when I look at it like this, I think, wow, look at all that water. You know, and I'm kind of, I'm a little bit of a math nut, so I like to calculate things occasionally and I always listen to the radio, you know, I don't care what songs they're playing, I don't care what the news is, I want to hear the river flow. And I always like to hear that every morning. Uh, it was 360 something I think they said today if you're interested. But uh, I did take this picture when it was flowing in the uh, just over 2000. I don't know personally how, what the peak is, but I'm sure it's just a little bit beyond that, maybe 2200 or something like that. And uh, I have run through some calculations with that, and that's about a million gallons per minute. Per day is about 1.4 billion gallons when it's up in the 2,000 to 2,200 CFS. That is a ton of water. I looked at the water use for golf courses, and if we took a medium end, one day we could water 36 golf courses for the year. That's how much water flows at peak times. The problem for us, we can't harness it. We can't store it. Um, so we have to kind of live with how that river flows. And we all know that at some times you can actually go across that bridge and look at the river and feel a little sick. I mean, I can feel sick when I look at that. Because um, I know that is desperate times. That is actually 2002, if, uh, if you're interested. Um, and we've got to make sure that when we get into those situations or approach those situations, that we use that resource the way we need to. Um, we can also not feel very good when we look at something like that. Um, whether it's low snow years or, or whatever, um, we all hope that that doesn't happen. But that's a reality to live in this area. So we need to be uh, very cautious and we need to manage that river, everybody. Um, whether it's people that are turning on showers, golf courses that are turning on irrigation, washing your car, whatever you're doing. I think the most important thing that I can get across tonight, I have a lot of questions um, because somebody may drive by Arrowhead and see the irrigation going and uh, even my neighbors ask me questions. 